And so we've got people coming in, as you'll see, we've got 22, 24 people coming in. Uh, welcome to the first ever uh, Worshipful Company of, of Glaciers um, webinar, but uh, live across the whole planet. <laughs> you'll see for those people we're up to 55, 56, uh, lots of people joining us here up to, up to our limit of our sold out limit. While you're here, um, for those people who've joined us, you'll see at the bottom of your screen there is a chat um, function. If you'd like to let us know where you're joining us from, please, London, Plymouth, Washington, Lusaka, Hong Kong, wherever it might be, just give us an indication of where you, you might be coming from. So I'm based in London, so I'll put it in there, London. So we've got North London coming in, Winchester, Farnham, Kenilworth, Naumburg, East Lothian, Scotland, Strood, Leeds, Ely. Pennsylvania, there we go, Venice, Wisconsin, Scotland, Northern Ireland, Wiltshire. So lots of people joining us, which is terrific news. We're gonna get started in about two minutes time, just letting people uh, come into it. We are East London here. If you're just joining us, let us know where you're coming from uh, tonight. Uh, Rygate in Surrey. North London, here's some of the Glaziers crowd. Henley on Thames, very nice. Worcestershire. 65 and heading up, which is great news. Oh, more from East Glaziers in Scotland, obviously an enclave there of Glaziers, Leith in Edinburgh. So if you are just joining us, just let us know where you're uh, joining us from this evening. Brentwood in Essex, Yorkshire, oh dear me there, Yorkshire, you could have actually pop around the corner into Barley Studio, maybe you can do that later for a celebratory uh, pint of Yorkshire ale perhaps, 68 and going upwards, Buckhurst Hill in Essex, Richmond, welcome on board, Pennsylvania greetings, uh, Philadelphia, Terrific. Do keep using this uh, throughout uh, our webinar uh, this evening. New York, USA, we have Balham, London. And also while you're waiting here, we'll just get going in a minute. We'll have our first poll uh, of the evening. Are you a member of the Worshipful Company of Glaciers and Painters uh, of Glass? You'll see that there. If you'd like to answer that, please. We've just got an idea of, of glaciers and, and non-glaciers. I'll give you about 20 more seconds on that, just see where we are. We have a yes, a, a no, of course, that should be rather not. I obviously slipped on that one and not yet. So 10 more seconds, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. End of the polling, here we go. So what have we got? You can see there 48% are glaciers, and therefore 52 percent are not or not yet so uh that's good news indeed thank you very much for for joining us um our second poll we got um what we have here second one let me bring it up for us do i have it stop sharing results and our second one what's your connection with glass just to inform our our star panel uh, tonight practitioner academic historian and enthusiast um that's the main one you're associated with. Just associate, you might be a different one, but you've only got three choices, so do your best with that one. Here it comes. So practitioner, academic, historian, enthusiast. Give us another few seconds on this one. 53 voted, 78% voted, 80% doing very well. 10, nine, eight, seven six five four three two and one end of the polling and here in are the results so 52 percent practitioners two percent academic historian 46 percent uh, are enthusiasts there we go terrific so uh welcome again to the worshipful company of Glaziers and Painters of Glass first ever uh, webinar. Um, my name's David Stringer-Lamar. I'll be taking us through uh, the evening's um, 
proceedings. I'm now going to attempt to share um, the screen. It's the first go at this uh, with the master Suzanne. So if anything goes wrong, it's not intentional. I can certainly guarantee you that should it all fade and BBC comes up or something and I've clearly pressed the wrong button. I'm now going to attempt to share um, the screen. Okay, so hopefully, let me see where we are with this. Um, apologies for a moment. Where are we? Share screen. Yep, here we go. Ta-da! Now, hopefully that's a success. And in fact, I'm leaving. That's it. There, there, I've reached a high point. So here we are. Thank you very much for joining us. I would now like to invite the master glazier, Suzanne Galloway, to address us. Master. Thank you and hello everyone. It's my pleasure to welcome you this evening and my privilege to be master of the Glaciers Livery Company for this very historic first webinar. Um, for those of you who are new to the Glaciers Company, we're one of the medieval craft liveries of the City of London. Our records go back at least to 1328 and since then we've been playing a full part in the civic life of the city. These days, that includes providing networking and business opportunities for our members, but also supporting the art and craft of stained and architectural glass, especially through our charity, the Glaciers Foundation. With that link to the craft very much in mind, our first webinar is devoted to insights from two renowned glass artists, and that's Helen Whitaker from the UK, and Kathy Jordan from the US. And in fact, Kathy was admitted just an hour ago as an artist freeman of our livery company at the very first virtual freedom admission ceremony. So welcome and congratulations, Kathy, on that first as well. I'm delighted that Helen and Kathy have agreed to talk to us this evening on the creative journey with the session hosted and moderated by David Stringer Lamar of Fortis Consulting. Without further ado, and with fingers crossed, as David has said, that the technology works, especially as I may be some, pressing some buttons shortly, that will be fun. I'd like to hand back to David. Great, thank you, thank you very much, uh, uh, Master. Uh, just ways to engage as we go through here. There is a chat facility if you just need to, to, to raise anything. Um, please don't put the questions in there. Put it in the, the questions and answers, which you'll either see at the bottom of your screen or at the top. And also you can vote for your favorites in there. And the more uh, votes it gets, then the higher it, it goes up. And then when we get to the questions and answers session, then we can actually look at that. It's a terrific way to engage. So please do get your questions uh, into the Q&A and then we will we'll look at those as we go um, forwards. Um, as the, the master kindly said, I'm David Stringer Lamar. Company is Fortis Consulting London, and we're primarily involved in business matchmaking between UK and international companies. With respect to stained glass, I am pleased to declare an interest in that our company happily works with Bali Studio. I've been a member of the Glaziers since 2007, and I am incredibly excited about this new addition of webinars to the events program of the Glaziers because it allows us to reach our existing members and also um, the new members who are going to come through. And the idea is UK and USA, we really couldn't have done this beforehand. So this is a fantastic um, opportunity uh, for us all. Okay, the running order for tonight, we've had the, the kind welcome from the master. We're then going to have the discussion uh, with Kathy and Helen questions and answers, and then closing remarks uh, by, by the master. Okay, so Helen Whitaker and Kathy Jordan. Kathy um, is not only valued for her artistic mastery, she has a well-respected career that's included studio owner, consultant, designer, and practitioner for new and historically significant glass projects across the entire United States. She studied with notable leaders in the industry, exploring traditional and contemporary approaches, and is regarded as one of the top glass painters in the USA. Incredibly pleased to have Kathy with us. Helen Whitaker is a renowned artist and designer. In 2018, one of Helen's stained glass windows was displayed in Buckingham Palace. Recently, she collaborated with David Hockney 
for our, for, uh, for his artwork in Westminster Abbey. Hopefully she'll talk about that later. And one of her pieces commemorating women um, in the Royal Air Force it was formally unveiled uh, by Her Majesty uh, Queen uh, Elizabeth. I'm very much looking forward um, to this uh, discussion. So the first question that I, I'd like to put to you, um, and if I may, Cathy, I'd like you to lead on this one. Can you identify particular ideas which influenced your creative approach at the start of your professional career? Cathy, please. Thank you, David. Thank you for this opportunity. Um, I started, what has affected my journey when I was really young was being trained classically in figure drawing. So that was, that's the, the basis for a lot of my artwork and, and what I enjoyed doing. Um, my introduction to glass um, doesn't have a romantic start to it that I, I wasn't a, a fan of glass. I didn't, you know, look at it incessantly in church when I was young. Um, it was all by accident for me. Um, but what underpins it is the, is the drawing aspect of it. Um, when I was 18, um, I needed a job and I ended up getting a job uh, with a commercial glass company that had a, a small stained glass shop and it was primarily for uh, supplies and whatnot and um, it was a source of money for me. It was income, but the fact that it was based in, with uh, an art aspect to it, it, I gravitated to it and I not only... Um, fell in love with the glass. I, I fell in love with the owner and I married my boss. <laughs> and uh, so I not only got a, a, a business, I, I got a husband and a baby. I got the whole shoot and match when I uh, decided glass was my, my choice. So the influence really was um, the ability to paint on glass um, because I was uh, trained classically and I started to see some of the, um, the artwork that was interpreted right directly onto the glass with vitreous paint, uh, I gravitated towards that. It was it was important for me to do that. Um, I think I gave you a slide, David, that would uh, accompany yeah. that. Yeah, I'll just find it now. And some of that, what you'll see is um, the slide uh, shows the home studio. Oh, that's Helen. <laughs> There it is, yeah. So that's my husband in the corner. Um, but I, I have a home studio as well. Um, I'm able to, to create and teach in that studio and uh, my love for glass, all of the other images in that um, are all painted on glass. So it's been, uh, that's the influence is the actual ability to paint on glass. Fantastic. Uh, th thank you ever so much uh, for sharing that and re really interesting to hear, uh, as you put it, you got the whole shooting match out of it. So clearly uh, a, a terrific uh, career uh, step um, for you. Um, I, I'm interested, if I may, in, the, in this, uh, the image I'm looking at in the top left hand corner. Could you tell us something about that, please, Kathy? My, uh, when I actually began my own company um, shortly after Clay and I got married, um, because I enjoyed painting on glass, I became, and I think I'm most known for replication painting. Um, that particular head was uh, King David. That's the piece I painted. Uh, it was a church down in Washington, DC that had vandalism. And the, uh, I think a beer bottle went right through one of the windows. So I had to, to replicate uh, that head. Um, and I also, um, I teach uh, classical painting, you know, with, with heads like that. Um, but that's that's a head that I did a couple years ago. Terrific, great, thanks very much. Um, Helen, if I can bring you in now, please. Uh, so can you answer, can you identify particular ideas which influenced your creative approach at the start of your professional career? So I'll go a little bit before my professional career. My um, father was a craftsman, was a cabinet maker, and his um, father before him. So craft has always been very dominant, let's say, in my childhood. Um, my mum used to drag me around art galleries such as the Whitworth and the Yorkshire Sculpture Park. So I think pretty early on, art and craft kind of were very much kind of equal in my life. Um, 
But it wasn't until I started doing A-level history of art that I started to see that within this art and craft, you could actually create pictures. Um, and my teacher, um, David Evans at the time, um, introduced me to people like Giotto, Piero della Francesca, Caravaggio, um, fantastic greats. And um, I just started seeing kind of the depth within these works and kind of the minds that went into them. Um, and then what happened is I fortunately found a course that I loved, which was at Sunderland doing glass and ceramics um, under the tuition of Mike Davis. And, um, and while I was there, I, um, my stepfather advised me to do work, um, work experience. So I um, contacted Keith Barley 25 years ago. And um, what's quite remarkable is I was, this window you see here, which is from Fairford Church, um, was one of the windows that I was actually working on, you know, actually physically, um, you know, in my hands kind of thing. Um, and as Kathy said, restoration painting really has been a big key for me in my development, you know, to look at the masters. Certainly with Fairford, you see here, and um, this is the great doom window and how the design spreads across the mullions, you know, it really pulls you in. So um, extremely exciting, really, in that respect. Um, if we could show another slide, please, as well, David, the next slide. So um, I, I, um, I was going to start work at Barley Studios and um, at the same time I, I kind of applied. I wasn't quite sure if I wanted more education. I'm always wanting education. And um, I was fortunate enough to get a scholarship to do an MA at the Prince of Wales Institute of Architecture in London. And um, the course then was called Visual Islamic and Traditional Arts. And what was quite um, exciting about this is not only was I going to continue my study of stained glass, but I was going to do wood carving, um, stone carving, calligraphy, all sorts of wonderful things. Um, and the man I have to thank for this, for this great um, kind, of, um, kind of insight was uh, Professor Keith Critchlow. And what he said is, educare is to bring out, it's not to force in. And he said, I'm only unlocking what's already there, Helen. Um, and we went on a, a field trip to Sharpsh, you'll see the Belle de Verrier on the left. And what was mind blowing about this as a young student is this window you see here, it's actually got the blueprint of the whole cathedral in it. So it's not only a window on it in its own right, it's connected. And Keith, you'll see on the right, uh, created a book called The Hidden Geometry of Flowers, that geometry is everywhere, you, you just have to find it. Um, and um, next slide please, David. So I guess from having this quite diverse education from Sunderland to the MA and history of art and everything, um, I was pretty much at a very early age and obviously Barley Studios open to the art and craft in a very um, open way. As, um, and you'll see here, this was an early commission I did where I didn't only do stained glass, I had a go at sculpture as well, which I'd never done before. So, um, you know, it, was, it shows that um, I was open as it were to this, to this medium what it can do. Terrific, great. Uh, thanks very much uh, for, for sharing for sharing those thoughts, uh, Helen. Um, did you find it difficult coming back from being a practitioner into the world of education? Um, it, which from being a student? Or, uh, sorry. Yeah, going, going, you were talking about doing the MA, um, I think yeah. you said in London. Yeah. Um, no, I think what, what's nice about this profession is you're learning, you're learning about history. So I felt that the actual practical as well as the academic running side by side was um, integral actually to my development. Right, thanks for that. Well, in that case, as you're, you're obviously in a talkative mood, you can lead us off if you wouldn't mind in the, in the second one. So are there any particular ideas, thoughts or people which have influenced your recent and indeed current work? Um, so I love working to commission um, it presents challenges, thoughts and approaches. And um, I think from my training, I kind of started thinking about the building, thinking about the Belle Verrier and these seven points you see on the screen kind of were my personal points that I think about when I'm starting a commission. So I'm, I'm not going to read through them, but you know, we've got the history of the building. It's not just about the window and the client. You've got to think of it in context. So very important for me to actually think about the relationship with the um, stained glass to the other works of art in the building as well. So um, I think you see here that there's more of a holistic approach um, to the designing. Um, if we have the next slide, please. 
And I think what this did is, because I was open to the art and craft, it enabled me um, to let other people be open to the art and craft who necessarily haven't um, you know, been trained in it. And this was um, a project I did in 2013 with the Royal Academist Huey O'Donoghue, who'd done a little bit of glass before, but ne never something of this scale. And here I translated his um, oil paintings into glass. And what was quite exciting about this is using my restoration hat, I actually asked him for his brushes so I could actually translate those exact brush marks um, and try and give as faithful a copy as I could do to his, um, to his creation. And then the next one. And again, um, a few years later, I was invited again back um, by the Dean of Westminster Abbey to uh, create a window with Barley Studios for um, David Hockney. And again, I think um, I'm pleased that I had the practice with Huey because this was quite a, a big one in the sense that, um, you know, David is a notable artist. And um, again, what was exciting about this is he came to the studio, he wanted to know about the craft, and, um, and I was able to facilitate that and again, translate his artwork um, into glass. Great, uh, thank you very much for that. And of course, it's very, um, uh in line with our discussion this evening about UK and USA, because I, as I recall, you were over in California, I think, where, where, where he lives, is that right? Yeah, that's his studio in California. So I stayed out there for just under a week, which was incredible. I mean, it's an incredibly creative atmosphere and um, he has an extremely supportive team around him who support what he does. And, um, and they were very good to me. And um, I think it's one of those moments in life that, you know, um, will stay with you forever. I kept pinching myself kind of, Feeling so blessed to be there, to be honest. Great, thank you for sharing. So, Kathy, coming to you, are there any particular ideas, thoughts, or people which have influenced your recent and current work? Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, I think out of the question, when I, I saw that question posed to us, um, people would be something that would influence. Uh, my work and, and my career the most, and I think that it always has. Um, I, I have met some of the most extraordinary uh, influential people over the past 30 years that have shaped and formed how I approach this medium and this career. Uh, recently, um, I would have to say that it has everything to do with the, the new position. I'm the Director of Art Development for Willard Hauser Architectural Glass. Uh, we are one of the oldest studios in the United States, uh, founded in 1898. And six years ago, it won, went under uh, uh, its re most recent acquisition by the Phillips family. Uh, they are at the top center of the picture. Um, the entire family works for the company, so it still maintains that family-owned business and we have over 70 employees. And so this idea of influencing me is definitely um, working with people and, and teams. Uh, I'm actively involved uh, in the American Glass Guild. Uh, I recently um, accepted the position as the president of the American Glass Guild and our mission is education. And again, it's networking. Um, with people and fellow artists. So that influences my work quite a bit. Um, there are still some Lumiere um, artisans and from the United States that live in the United States that are very important to me. Sylvia uh, Nicholas in the lower uh, right-hand corner. She's in her nineties and she still um, works quite uh, prolifically. She's also a sculptor. Um, and education influences me. I continue to participate every year for myself since I started um, back in 1987 uh, to, to, uh, to take classes. I think, Helen, I've probably, um, I'm up to about a half a dozen classes with Narcissus. Um, I'm such a fan of color and, and just the possibilities in glass as a medium to explore it, to, to bring in the figurative work that I'm most comfortable with. Um, I have in the center of that photograph, probably one of the a projects that I'm most proud of. And that was an English window that was completely destroyed in a fire um, 
there's a little shot of how it came to my studio in, in, a, in a box of shards. Um, but I, I, I'm, in, I'm influenced again by um, my team and just the creativity and the, just the talent that I'm surrounded by. And it's, it, it's across the board. It's not just the artist in the back of the shop or in the art department. It's, it's the creative sales force. It's the ownership, it's the innovation, um, it's networking. It's, you know, that's, that's what keeps this very much interesting for me every day. And, you know, being involved in glass for over 30 years now, it, every job is new and it's exciting and I make money. So it's, it, it keep, it's our livelihood. Terrific, uh, great, thanks for sharing that. It was, it was interesting hearing you talk there about creativity of the whole team so not just the artists or the designers but i think you even mentioned like the business development people the marketing staff could you yeah you because know, a lot of people talk about creativity it's the artist but you're actually saying i think it's bigger than that it's, it's actually the whole team that's involved with it. is that right for me to, to take that away you know, i was probably one of the first ones that would argue that um a client or a church would do better and be served better with a smaller independent studio um, because that's what I was for many years. My company was the Art of Glass and it was based in Philadelphia, outside of Philadelphia. And I had this idea that I was, you know, I was going to be the small dress shop instead of the large department store approach. And since I've been with Willits and it's the large department store, I realized that all of the people that make up that department store are all just like me. Um, they're very, very talented and they bring their hearts and souls to it. So we're just now a group of a lot of small department stores that make this amazing team. And what it allows me to do is to focus on what I do best. I, so I, I'm not burdened by you know, whether or not there's health or, health or safety issues or whether or not someone is invoiced or uh, who's, who's purchased the glass. I know all of this has to happen, but I can really concentrate on uh, servicing the client and then bringing back uh, the information and faithfully uh, reporting it to the, the design team because I was a practitioner, I speak the language so I can talk to the client and I can relay that to the artwork faithfully. So there's no disconnect between a typical sales situation to what happens in the studio. A lot of times the sales department um, isn't as versed in the actual medium, but I am. And I think that's, that adds value uh, to my position and, and what our company offers. Great. Terrific. Really interesting to hear that. Uh, we're getting some questions coming in now. So all of you, the attendees, I think there's seven or eight, nine questions there. So you can add your own questions or you can vote for them. So as I said, that will move them up in the order. So when we get around to the questions and answers stage, uh, we can do that. So please don't put them in the comments section. Make sure they do go in, in, the, in the question section. Okay, so let's see where we are now. So, uh, Kathy, um, won't get you off the hook, hook on this one. So you can lead us off in this, please. How do you keep your creativity fresh? Do you actively seek out projects which challenge or develop your creativity and skills? Yes, I think there's a slide that helps me. There it is. Um, when I took, the, it's interesting, when I took the position at, at Willett Hauser, um, the in-house art department and design department had fallen um, to the wayside at one point in the history of Willits, they had a very active in-house design department. So John and Mary um, really wanted to bring that back and, and bring it back strong. So I was able to um, work directly with the designers and I was able to actually do some of the design work to start it. Um, although I gravitate to traditional work, um, I also was able to, to bring in some contemporary. So some of the imagery that's in this particular are my designs. Um, but it's, again, it's back to, um, it's, it's working with, uh, with this team, you know, that brings this kind of creativity and, and design work. 
Terrific. Uh, and in terms of, I think, did you mention there were 30 people in the team or? We have over 70 uh, oh my, oh God, uh, right. Sorry. team members, but yeah. in the, yeah, in the art department, um, there is a photograph right there of some of the lead design team that, that we work with. Um, and they bring an eclectic uh, uh, ability. Um, Mark has one of, there's one fellow that's just really wonderful is um, he's went to seminary. So he's a minister. Um, you know, there was some concern. I can remember when we took the job over, I was told, you know, Kathy, she's a very good artist, but I, I don't know that she, she understands um, the liturgical side or, or the, the theology. And um, I've also was taught that uh, if there was a part of the aspect of me as a business person that I did not have just to bring this team and find that and we have a fellow there that's a, a minister, a Lutheran minister, an Episcopal minister. We have Catholic uh, consultation. Um, so it's just, it's again, it's bringing this, this team effort together that um, creates a, a formidable group of people. Fantastic. Thank you very much for, for sharing that really. 70 people, that's, that's great. And we're bringing all different aspects of the creative um, Juice, as it were, to, to the fore, and obviously for the benefit of the common whole. Great. Helen, moving over to you then, please. How do you keep your creativity fresh? Do you actively seek out projects which challenge or develop your creativity and skills? I was thinking about this, and the word that kept it fresh um, was the word stress. I seem to put myself under a lot of stress, um, and I continually push myself out of my comfort zone. Um, I think what I like about commission work is you never know where it's going to go, but equally, it's quite a treacherous road uh, to get to, to the end. Um, as Kathy said, I think the studio thing is, is um, you know, at the heart of it in the sense that the work that comes through our studio ranges from every, every century. Um, while the studios, you know, do conservation from medieval up to, up to present day. So to have that around me, as well as creation, is, in, you know, new work is, is a wonderful environment. Um, you see a slide here of Narcissus, he appears again. Um, last year, I uh, self-funded myself to go to America to work with um, various um, stained glass artists or to experience what they knew with Judith uh, Schachter, uh, Kathy, um, and Narcissus, um, an art feminella, even a conservator. And um, rightly or wrongly, I, I had a commission in mind um, when, when I met Narcissus for the first time and I thought, hey, wouldn't it be great to uh, try this fusing out that Narcissus is uh, known for? I spoke to David Judson and um, from Judson Studios who have actually created this amazing creative place that, that houses this um, technique and um, went over and uh, made my first window. Um, I'm pleased with that, but yes, it was stressful and it certainly kept it fresh, I would say, so um, the experience. Um, so thank you to David Judson, may I say at this point, and, and Narcissus uh, for this and his wonderful team as well. We've got a super team out there. Um, may I have the next slide as well, please? Um, again, this keeps it fresh and a little bit stressful in the sense that um, through various connections, I was invited to represent uh, the British government and um, in doing so, they wanted me to select a couple of my works um, to um, celebrate design is great and craft is great. So um, they're quite diverse, the, the two ones I've chosen. But, um, you know, I'm putting here um, kind of um, in celebration of Hockney's window that glass doesn't have to be painted. You know, it can be coloured and leaded. Um, so um, this is one of the windows that I've showcased here. Um, and this uh, next slide, please, David. And this led on to the British government asking me to create a panel for an exhibition in Hong Kong. And the idea of this was um, to kind of create those international relationships even further. And the theme was Chinese art and Western art to kind of bring those two together. So I created this um, panel here, you see here, which um, is from Hallpool Mansion. It's inspired and it's the moon gate um, and there's lots of geometry and symbolism and um, Again, it was very stressful. I had the team at Bali Studio supporting me to do this. Um, so all good in the end. Um, and then the final slide, David. This is, this, 
So again, another exciting project, which got me out of my comfort zone, um, is um, a project that I'm working on at the moment, and it's for a lily chapel that you see in the slide there. And um, it's in the Philippines. And I'm working with quite a well-known Japanese architect who's designed this and um, the clients who are um, based in, in, um, in the Philippines and indeed the manufacturers as well. So um, this, is, um, this has been a, a really um, um, interesting project. And I think working with Hockney certainly kind of got me in good stead um, to kind of deal with something of this scale and the people as well. So stressful, but all good. <laughs> Great, thank you very much. I can see a theme coming through there. Is it that stress <laughs> is good because stress is bad, but there's, there's a theme there. How do you approach this? Because obviously these are new and challenging ones. You mentioned stress. So does the, how supportive or how necessary is the team around you at Barley Studio? I'm really pulling through the themes that Kathy was talking about, the importance of a team uh, approach to projects. Yeah, um, I can do anything I do without the team at Barley Studios and I'm, I'm very fortunate that we've got a much smaller team than Kathy but we've got um, incredible artists and craftsmen who support me to do my creations and indeed work on, on conservation projects too um, and they, you know, they, I, I, I ask their comments, I ask their feedback because my um, belief is I'd rather know everything now than when it's in the window so it's, you know, I, I welcome any kind of feedback at all stages of the project but um, I, I don't think I could work on my own, to be honest. I think um, being around these very creative people and, and the dynamics that are associated is, is very positive. Great. Thank you very much, Helen. Thank you very much for Kathy. Absolutely fascinating. And thank you for sharing that with us. We've got a lot of questions here. So I'm going to try and uh, get this function right as well. So we'll move over to it into our questions and answer session. Remember, you can still vote um, through them over the next 10, 10 minutes. So. Let's see what we have here. So the most popular uh, question voted by our attendees um, tonight is, I'll ask you both, have you ever accepted a commission, and it's got brackets for the money, that didn't initially inspire you, but then, didn't, then turned into something more than you expected? Kathy or Helen, anybody want to start? Have you ever, have you ever accepted a commission that didn't initially inspire you, but actually in the end turned out to be something much different and more positive. Yes, please, Kathy. Um, right, a, a project that came to mind was this uh, wonderful Catholic church in Colorado Springs where um, they had existing stained glass windows that were um, produced by uh, a very meaningful, and loving congregant who was a hobbyist with stained glass and, and made a lot of these windows. Um, and you could tell the level of craftsmanship was, was beginner. And um, so the challenge was, was to come in with the last main window and have them be respectful to the existing collection. But I was immediately struck by um, how difficult that was going to be and almost to the point where it didn't matter about the money. I was concerned because clearly our price point was going to be more than what they had paid. I wasn't surprised if those windows were donated. Um, so I was immediately kind of put off by the challenge and how do you, how do you create something that's uh, respectful of existing windows? Um, and we did a beautiful job and uh, I, this, this fellow Jay, he was retired, um, you know, having to sit with him and, and be able to tell him that his existing windows might not hold up over the years because they're, they had copper foil and, uh, and to try to be gentle and not uh, upset them. So the, the, the job ended up, um, we were uh, in the diocese out in Colorado, the windows we produced became the, the cover of the manual, you know, the, the uh, directory for them. It made, they had a lot of articles written about it. Um, I promised them that we would show them all of the steps for social media. So I sent pictures of progress and they learned a lot. They fell in love with the windows. I absolutely adored Jay, cause I got to meet, um, 
him as a person and and the job really turned out beautiful and I think it was respectful um, to what was there but clearly it's um, it sets itself apart so that was that was a project for me great so, thanks uh, Helen how, have you ever accepted a commission that didn't initially inspire you but then turned into something more than you expected um, so I would never ever kind of um, accept a commission that I didn't want to do. Um, so I mean that that's kind of my um, integrity as an artist, I hope. But um, sadly, I've never been lured as well by vast amounts of money coming my way to do a window. So I, <laughs> I must be in the wrong job. So <laughs> so. Okay, great. We'll see if there's anybody out there going to lure you uh, with vast amounts of money. So so the next one we have up here. I am always impressed by the breadth of knowledge that stained glass artists have about iconography. What reference books are your favorites? Always impressed by the breadth of knowledge that stained glass artists have about iconography. What reference books are your favorites? Yeah, you got <laughs> uh, Maybe just one or two, Kathy, not, not the whole bookshelf. <laughs> but, yeah, um... What's interesting with me is we have, um, at Willett Hauser, we have one of the oldest privately held active libraries in the United States. It's a repository that dates back to 1898. We have over 20,000 imagery and we have a full library that Helena Weiss had started at, from Willett's. Um, so the, when I actually am in the studio in Minnesota, uh, if you can't find me, I'm up in their library looking at all the original artwork. Um, it, I, I don't know that I have one or two books. Um, I actually have a, um, a problem with books. <laughs> I, I like to have glass books around me. I'm just, and I'm, ter I'm shameful when I say that I'm the one that likes the pictures. You know, I, I'm, I'm a visual, I'm a visual thinker and learner. So I, I, uh, I the more pictures in a book, the better. I think I just got a book yesterday. Don't tell my husband. <laughs> Terrific. Uh, Helen, how about you and iconography? I can't even say it tonight. Iconography. Iconography, thank you very much. Okay. Iconography, full time lucky. Helen. Again, like Kathy, um, Bolly Studios has got a huge encyclopedia of books here. So we're, we're very fortunate in that respect. Um, I, I have looked at all these books in depth through my education, through my BA and my MA and um, I tend not to get too um, weighed down by what I should be looking for and what should be in it. I try and keep it quite fresh again in that respect and just think of ideas and then I try and find things that actually work for it. So I wouldn't necessarily go to a book and think, right, this is, this is where it's at and this is what I'm going to do. So it's um, organic, I think, is the expression. Great, terrific. Thank, thank you very much uh, for answering those. We've now got uh, upwards of 20 uh, questions in there. We're probably not going to get through all of them. Do remember, because some have only got one tick each, so the more you vote for them, then it actually goes higher than the chance of picking them out. Right, the next one then to, to both of you, if you had to pick out one window or building as being the pinnacle of the art of stained glass across the centuries, which one would it be and why? If you had to pick out one window or building as being the pinnacle of art, which one would it be? And you'll have one. Um, okay, I'll... I'll Hello? start, yeah, if I start with this. Um, it, it has to be, I have to say, um, and we restored it as well as the wonderful um, window at Fairford Church. And I say this because I think that stained glass generally was, um, there were English glaziers at that time, and there was a certain style that was being pushed. And um, these um, Flemish glaziers um, set up just outside of the jurisdiction of Southwark. And um, they kind of shook up the party and, um, you know, they, they, it was much more kind of realistic. It spread the mullions, um, you know, and, and they were just kind of pushing art. So I think that spearheaded um, a lot of contemporary design. For me, there's obviously a lot later ones too, but um, what they were doing at that period was revolutionary, I think, in stained glass in Britain. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, Kathy, over to you then. One window you know, or building has been the pinnacle. You know what? I, this, this, this question actually feels like it's going gonna, it's gonna to stump me. Um, <laughs> You know, I, I think I was so moved by Westminster when I came to England and, and Lincoln Cathedral and just the sheer size and being able to go into the to the Glazers Trust and see 
where the repairs were being done. Um, so it, it's a lot of work that I saw in the UK. Um, I mean, personally for me, I, um, I love the German and the English painting. Um, so I don't know if it's one particular building. Is that a fair answer? Well, I that's my answer. It is the answer, is it? Is it? But yeah, you tried to get in two or three there quite sneakily, but I think you got away with it. I did. <laughs> okay, the next one we got up here. Um, what would be your dream commission? What would be your dream commission? Um, I, I'm living my dream commissions right now. It's uh, we're we're uh, we're in the throes of a an amazing project in Houston. Texas. It was George and Barbara Bush's home church. It's a, it's nearly a $2 million project. Um, we're in the throes of it right now. I'm, I'm coming very close to contractual agreement with a project I think is going to be one of the most significant I've ever been involved with. And so it, the dream jobs are happening right now for me. Excellent. Good, good to know. And we look forward to hearing an update on that. Helen? Um, again, I think it, I, I, I agree with Kathy. I feel um, very lucky what I'm doing and every job presents new challenges. Um, I say stress, but I mean that positively because it makes me sort it out and, and think of a solution. So um, I'm pretty happy with where I'm going and, um, and, and what, what's ahead of me. There's a few projects in the pipeline. So um, yeah, it's good. Great, terrific. Lots of questions coming in now, so keep them coming, keep the voting going on with a few more minutes. So could you offer any suggestions to the next generation of stained glass artists as what to do to reach the heights of their profession and craft? So any top tips for the upcoming generation of stained glass artists? Um, Kathy? I, my journey with it, with, with art, and, and especially with glass, um, I, I never had a degree from any art institution here in the United States. Um, I feel like now I'm 60 years old and, and I, I have the unconventional education and I feel like the amount that I've invested in, in education for me as an artist probably equals multitude double what tuition for college would be here in the United States, but I would encourage uh, any young artist to do an apprenticeship in and to to seek out the best in the industry. Um, keep your mind open. Uh, there's a lot of innovation happening. There's a lot of creativity. I would say um, absolutely uh, learn about the past glass and history because that speaks to um, you know what we're doing today and, and what what works and what didn't work. Um, you know, having the opportunity to do conservation work for the first two to three decades of my career. You know, I've often said to Helen, it was like someone took the Mona Lisa out of a uh, the museum and brought it into the studio, and I could work directly on some of these works of art. So the windows themselves will speak to you. Um, but to, to seek out education and share, you know, have the heart of a, you know, of, a, of sharing. Don't hold things secret close to your heart. You know, just go out there and learn. Great. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, Helen, some top tips? <laughs> um, I kind of support everything Kathy said, really. I think um, yeah, when I came into stained glass, I didn't think, right, I want to be this. I'm going to do this. Um, I just enjoyed being in this very creative atmosphere. And as Kathy said, working on these amazing masterpieces of the past was um, extremely rewarding. Um, you know, that was enough for me at that stage. Um, but I think the one thing I would say is you've got to believe in yourself because, um, you know, the journey um, through, you know, through our professions can be um, an interesting ride. So you, you've got to have convictions, um, you know, and um, yeah, and, and you've just got to believe in what you do and have a good support team around you as well. You know, people who believe in what you do and, um, and aspire for the best. Terrific, great, thank you very much. Okay, we have one here that's interesting. How do you handle a client that wants something that you, as an artist, know is not a good design as far as aesthetics? How do you handle a client that wants something that you, as an artist, know is not a good design as far as aesthetics? 
Um, I, I, I actually probably come across that more than I care to. <laughs> um, you very well intended clients, you know, that have certain backgrounds, you know, some even are art backgrounds, but they don't necessarily translate into glass or what they, their, their discipline is and necessarily easily, easily translated into glass. Um, I feel like it's my responsibility to educate them, you know, to do my best to say, you know, what, what is possible and what isn't possible. What are the inherent weaknesses to an idea that they're considering? How can we work together um, to improve it, to keep an open mind? Um, I'm not bashful at all. So I, I wouldn't have a problem in, in, in a gentle way, in a respectful way to let them know if there was a problem. Um, and I usually get around that, so. Great, thank you. Uh, Helen, how do you handle a client that wants something that you as an artist know is not good design as far as aesthetics? Um, I, I, again, I'll support Kathy on this again, but you know, you have to be honest. You have to be honest in, um, in your relationship with the client. You know, it's, it's a two-way relationship and there's also the DAC, the Diocese Advisory Committee, certainly if you're doing religious work or the architects. So there's a whole body of people who actually are on this journey. So I think it's important, um, yeah, really just to communicate as much as you can and, um, and again, keep that artistic integrity um, in what you're doing. Right, thank you. thank you very much for answering that. Now, people have clearly been listening um, to your presentation. So we have here, you're both masterful glass painters. Um, what things did you learn from your recent um, trips visiting with other artists whose work might be different from your own? What did you learn from when you engaged with different artists on these visits you've been describing? Ellen, Cathy? Ellen? Oh yes, okay, hi. <laughs> right, um, I, I mean, I, I, I think Judith, we, we all know Judith Shatter, and she was extremely inspiring. I mean, she just lived, eat and breath, you know, breathed what she was doing. So I absolutely, I actually was fortunate enough to stay with her for a few days in her home. So um, I learned that she's always looking for ideas, you know, she's gotten a massive kind of, um, uh, what do you call it, like portfolio of imagery that she sources from. Um, and she's just, she's just a really kind um, and talented lady. And I very much enjoyed being in her presence. Uh, Kathy as well, you know, she took me into her studio again. I stayed with her and um, incredible creative atmosphere. Kathy's open to all sorts of things. So there was fused glass, there was traditional painting. Um, Again, that was really inspiring. Um, and um, Narcissus, we went to a course with him. I didn't stay with him, but we, we uh, went and worked with him. Um, yeah, and then, and then uh, Kenneth Lee, there were quite a few. So I don't know if I particularly learned a certain thing, but I learned um, a way of working and an approach to it. But yeah, there were techniques, but it's more about the mindset, I think, that I was more interested in than the actual, you know, how we dot things and, and such. Great, thanks, Helen. Kathy? Could you repeat that question? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, you're both masterful uh, glass painters. Um, what things did you learn from your recent trip visiting with other artists? You know, I, I make it a point, you know, every year to, to, take, out, to take workshops and classes. And, and I would say the majority of them um, lean into to other strengths than I have myself. Um, so that I can be more well-rounded. Uh, I know in the past for me uh, to be able to do replication painting, I had to learn how to paint different than you know, what I was most comfortable with. There's a lot of artists in our industry that um, are very comfortable painting in one style. Um, their work is easily identifiable. Um, for me personally, uh, I had to remove myself from the work that I did because if it was replication painting, you didn't want to see the hand of the artist. So I would, I would often be asked, you know, what is your style, Kathy? And um, so I'm always fascinated by other uh, approaches and techniques, you know, um, like some of the, the individuals. Um, I was able to take a class with Judith for two weeks. We, we worked together and, and her, her approach is so completely different than what I would do or even would want to do even after I watched what she did, but it's, it's masterful. 
and learning the fusing with Narcissus and the traditional painting, Jonathan Cook. Uh, I, I'm amazed at what he can do, but I, I don't know that I could paint the way he paints. Uh, bringing it back, there's just pieces of what everybody does and it kind of distills into whether I want to use it here or there, but it, I think it well rounds me and, it, and I can converse uh, with, with people when I learn what they do. Great, terrific. Thank you very, very much, both of you. I thought that was, was terrific. Here's my, my silent round of applause to you. We've got an enormous amount of questions there. Uh, people clearly engaged. So, so thank you very, very much uh, for sharing your stories with us. So the Glaziers, the Worshipful Company of Glaziers and Painters of Glass, here's all our social media presence. So if you want to find more um, about us, please do go to website, Facebook, Twitter, uh, or LinkedIn. We've got lots of exposure there and a very growing and influential livery. If you're not a member of the Worshipful Company of Glazers and Painters of Glass, then do have a look at the website in the particular uh, section there. You've heard from the master that in the, in, the, in the present environment, in fact, we are able to do virtual um, ceremonies. So normally people have to come all the way um, to, to, to London in order to join as a, as a freeman of the Worshipful Company of Glazers. But at the moment, that is not the case. And obviously we've already heard that, that Kathy Jordan is the first person ever um, since records began. We're not sure if anybody did it before 1328, but probably um, they didn't. So do have a look at membership uh, and do get in touch with us. And I'm pleased to say that the next um, webinar we've got coming up is June uh, 25 with Martin Donlin. Um, we'll put it out of Eventbrite and on our usual um, channels that you just heard. So do sign up. Again, there will be a, a limited um, amount of space there. So please don't miss out. Thank you very much for being here. It's been terrific. Kathy, thanks very much. Helen, thanks You're very welcome. much. I've learned an enormous amount. Thank you ever so much uh, for sharing. Master, may I invite you to make some remarks. Master. You may. I just want to say um, thank you myself to Kathy and to Helen for that really successful session. And to David, David, thank you for being our host. Also, of course, thank you to our guests for taking part and for your, your questions. It was absolutely marvelous to have so many um, questions. And I can promise you, even the ones that we didn't get to answer, they were all good questions. Um, David has mentioned, we've already got the next webinar planned. Um, Thursday, um, the 25th of June at 6 a.m. with Martin Donlin another international and award-winning glass artist. That will be a treat. Places will be available soon. And so, as they say, book early to avoid disappointment. A reminder um, that we are hoping that this webinar, which has been recorded, will um, be online via a link, which will be great. And as David said, if you are thinking about joining um, our livery company, then please go to our website for full information there. Again, everyone, thank you so much for being with us this evening. Um, and until next time, stay safe and take care. You must.